Hey guys, it's your girl Corporate Carolyn, but I don't have to be corporate today, so I got my little um, take a walk around the neighborhood clothes on with my husband, um, although I would plait my hair up the way that um, you will see it if you check out the video that I talked about, like what I do at nighttime um, to put my hair away. But anyway, I'm just hanging out with my husband on a weekend, and I got the bright idea after... Um, um, producing or publishing the video talking about um, when did bashing black men become a thing um, because it, it really is bad I mean I don't like how badly they're talking about us um, but I really don't like how badly we're talking about them and I think it needs to stop and so some of the videos that I'm coming up with are what I hope to be um, a way for us to some kind of way meet in the middle and have a meeting of the mind for all of these single beautiful black people that are out there where um, black men are thinking there are not um, black women out there that are worth marrying. Some person has said that. And then where um, there are black women saying there are no black men out there worth marrying. I've heard that. I heard that back in the 80s before I met my husband when I was thinking that I was going to have to probably marry somebody white and then here he comes and then it's been over 32 years that we've been married so people have always said that that there are no um, good black men out there but it's a very limited um, worldview and I hope to change that in the very near future but that's not what I'm talking about today oh I did a video also um, that said are black women angry with angry with black men and a lot of times we're giving off the impression that we are angry angry and that turns people off but the same people who are being angry with the black men are upset when those same black men find white wives or Hispanic or Asian wives and then they're like saying that they're taking all of our good men so something has got to change we just can't keep doing the same thing and expect to get a different result because that is insanity but the name of this video or the title of this video is are black men angry with us? And if so, why? Well, I took some time to think about that. Um, Kevin Samuels, um, God rest his soul, is or was a hilarious person to listen to. He really let a lot of black women have what for, what possessed them to call him, especially, or to go on his um, his um, program with bonnets and, you know, coming on with these lame stories where he could just make mincemeat out of you. I don't know what possessed them. Why would they do it? But they did. And a lot of them got roasted, um, cooked, whatever you want to call it. And it was hilarious. I didn't like him cursing and using the hardcore profanity with them. Mm. Or getting them to rate themselves, you know, like whether you're a seven or eight. And I think he said, I'm um, Kelly, be, be Kelly Rowland and Beyonce were maybe like eights and maybe you couldn't use a seven. I thought that was very demeaning. I didn't like that. But um, a lot of the men that would respond to his videos, they were complaining about us and they were saying a lot of things that to my own ears with the black women that I've encountered and has see, have seen on um, social media as well, a lot of what he said was true. And so I took the time um, on my work notebook with a boatload of notes, so bear with me please, um, of reasons why I think black men might be angry with us and why they might, and I don't know why that's sticking out, sorry, and why they might have a reason um, to be angry with us. Number one, this is what I think. I believe that reality TV has made us black women caricatures of ourselves. I mean, there's so much fake hair and mind you, I do wear a half wig from time to time and I wear ponytails, but it's just like, it's crazy fake hair where in no stretch of the imagination could it ever be real or ever grow out of your head. That's the kind of fake hair that I'm talking about and where you never see a person's real hair. I believe that that's a turnoff to a lot of men. And so like fake hair, eyelashes that, you know, that like beacon like that, almost like a bat has landed onto your eyes and they can't even see your beautiful eyes. Um, you know, the nails that are so long with the points. How are you going to be intimate like that? I don't even know how you wipe your butt 
I'm sorry to say, but it's true. And I'm 58, so bear with me. Um, you get more opinionated as you get older. And then also all these BBLs, you know, we're saying that we're doing it for men. I mean, I'm so glad that um, my husband um, loves my little booty the way it is because I was telling him that without him, I probably would have done something really dumb years ago and I might have gotten a BBL myself. Um, but these BBLs and like if you look at reality TV, you just think that everybody in the world has these huge booties that um, some of them are so big. I don't even know how you can sleep on them at night, how you fit on a regular toilet. Um, this one lady um, was actually on um, on Instagram talking about how she needed, um, she wanted the airlines to make the seats bigger so that she could fit into one seat with her butt. Um, but her butt needed really two seats, if you're going to be fair. Just buy two seats, lady. If you want a booty that big, then just get two seats. But it's just like it's gotten out of control. It's ridiculous. And then not only are they changing the way that we're looking in everyday life, because I saw this thing where Phaedra Parks, who um, was a really beautiful lady when the Real House of Atlanta started, Real Housewives of Atlanta started. Now she has these sons. And I saw on Instagram this post briefly where her son was talking about what a great mom she was. It was a wonderful testament. But if you looked at her, I mean, just how her looks have changed from way back when to now. Just the huge wig, um, an impossible color for um, her hair to ever naturally be. Um, just the eyelashes, the heavy makeup. I mean, she just looked almost like a caricature of herself. She, beautiful woman, accomplished. But the other item that goes along with it, these beautiful women, she has a law degree. But if you've looked at her over the years, um, as well as a lot of the ladies on the Real Housewives um, programs, um, they are loud, profane, calling everybody the B word. If you look at doctors um, or married to medicine, um, like Dr. Heavenly, there's no way I'd ever want her to be my dentist. Um, you know, seeing her on that program, Dr. Jackie, um, who started off as such a class act, I wouldn't want her to be my gynecologist. These ladies are on there acting like complete fools, um, drama filled, um, just, you know, going on like they're just crazy people. I can't even watch it anymore. I tried and it's, it's just putting black women especially like in their worst light and I believe Andy Cohen um, the same way that Michael Jackson said that Tommy Mottola he's very devilish that's what Michael said <laughs> and it was hilarious back in the day but Andy Cohen strikes me as being very devilish because he gives these women just enough for them to pretend but not enough for them to have their own and so um, they're on there in these homes that look like they're rented, um, you know, with no pictures up a lot of times. And then one time he even asked, um, what was it? She by Sheree, the lady, um, Sheree um, Whitfield. He asked her once, how was she affording um, the house that she bought? I'm like thinking being on this show and acting a fool should be enough money to get me to buy a house in Atlanta, but apparently it wasn't. And so these women are on there just acting a complete fool and not making um, enough money to really have a decent lifestyle or a lifestyle that they're pretending that belonged to them. So not wanting to bash them, but it's really the, um, the train that they're on, it seems that's making them do the most in order to um, to make the money. So, but what it's doing for a generation of women is making them think that that's the, um, the beauty standard or the ideal that you have to follow, that you need a BBL, that you need a big wig, that you need um, for your makeup to be beat. Like I saw this um, presentation of what Serena Williams looked like on Instagram, you know, like the blonde wig, just the thick layer of makeup, just the eyebrows that are, you know, cut off and pencil back in. She looked like a caricature of herself, not wanting to dismiss her. That's how she wants to look. So be it. But what I'm talking about is the influence that it's having on um, the women that are, are watching these programs. And we're thinking that if we look like them, that the guys that are out here are going to like that. But if you listen 
Um, or if you even ask some of the men that are in your circles, ask them, do you like the way this looks? When my husband has seen these shows, when I've had them on in years past, he's like, oh my goodness. You know, the women start off looking so beautiful, then they start talking and then they don't look so good. And he's like, why are they wearing these huge wigs and this makeup? You know, I'm sure she's a pretty woman. Um, you're following the wrong standard. Instead of like maybe being the best version of yourself and, you know, being um, in a way that guys would like you, that you're interacting with, you're subscribing to this standard of beauty and then you're acting like them. You're being loud in public. Um, you're twerking um, when you're like at the Essence Festival and that kind of stuff is on film. And then you're thinking that, um, like Kevin Samuels always talked about, a high value man, you know, men that make over $100,000 a year. And I always say, I don't think you should be looking for a man based on the money he's making. You should be looking for a high quality man, a man with good character. And a lot of those men are not turned on by what they're seeing on the Real, Real Housewives of Atlanta or the Real Housewives of Potomac. And it's a misnomer in general because a housewife is a woman who stays at home and a man takes care of her. Um, a lot of those women don't even have men to take care of them. And, um, you know, they're not a housewife. So I don't even understand how that um, is something that you can say when you look at women who used to be so beautiful, like um, Kendra, um, uh, Kenya, Kenya Moore. Um, I remember her just being just so gorgeous, 80s, 90s. And when I see her on these shows, you know, just even she's wearing wigs now and she has the most beautiful hair ever. Um, and she's fallen into that stereotype. The fact that it was so hard for her to find a husband that would do right and that she's going through this horrible divorce. Hopefully it's finalized by now. But um, just the fact that she kind of fell into that pattern and a woman as fine as she is struggled to find a husband. So that should let you know that that particular standard of beauty is not necessarily what's going to get you um, the husband that you may be looking for. If you're not looking for a husband, turn off the video and you might not want to listen anymore. But anyway, um, number two, um, the Kardashians have become our, um, like the Kardashians, um, the Carters also, people like that have become our role models for relationship goals. Or even the, um, the Smiths, like Will Smith and his wife Jada. Like we've been looking at those people as having the relationship goals. Why would anyone ever look at Kim Kardashian as being a person um, for real, um, real estate? real estate, but real uh, relationship goals rather, or like, um, um, whatever the other girl's name, um, who was the billionaire. Um, I forget their names cause I don't watch this show needless to say, but you know, you can't live in the United States and not know who these ladies are. You know, my hat's off to, is off to them for their business acumen and all of that stuff. And they seem to, you know, to take care of their children and everything. But you don't want Kim Kardashian to be your example of how you're supposed to act in a relationship. And we're looking at them like that. We're looking at Jada and we're holding them up as some sort of standard. And, you know, we're holding up Beyonce as some sort of standard. She's a woman who's married and, you know, she's living her life and she's doing what she wants to do for her. But stop looking at them for examples of how you should behave in your everyday life. You need to look at some people who've been married for 20, you know, 30 years or whatever and like say, oh, okay, well maybe, you know, maybe I shouldn't be having an argument out in the street, you know, with my husband. Maybe I shouldn't have sat there and let my husband go up on the stage um, on a world, um, on a world stage and let him act like a fool in front of all these white people and slap somebody based over a joke that really wasn't that serious. Maybe you guys could have taken Chris Rock to the side um, and like for people who are not even living together you find out later but yet you're like oh I want to be like Will and Jada oh I want to be like um you know Sierra and Russell Wilson we don't know what their lives are like um stop trying to be like other people and wanting um the black guy that you've met to act like that because I remember one time um Will Smith and Jada they were being interviewed someone was saying how do you guys keep you know your marriage hot and how do you keep it sexy and I think Will was talking about 
out, like when they get back together after he's been gone, like on a movie set for like maybe four months or whatever, how he'll have like rose petals and, and then he'll run some bath water for her and, you know, put some bubble bath in it. And so a lot of ladies are like, oh, you know, my husband doesn't do that. My boyfriend doesn't do that. And my husband said, um, like, um, he imitated um, the movie, the, A Bronx Tale, where Sonny, uh, not Sonny, but um, Robert De Niro said, the real man is the man, you know, who works every day and takes care of his family. My husband said, the real man is the man who has to stay home with the wife every day. <laughs> and put up with her foolishness and still go out and work and take care of the family but they don't get four to six months off and then we're looking at an example of what someone who is doing who may not have seen his wife for three to four months we can't base our lives on them so i think that black men are tired of us looking at these you know um not real world examples and holding them up to that standard that they can't live um, that they can't live up to. You need to be more realistic about what you're expecting. And stop expecting everybody to make six figures. Everybody's not going to do that. According to even Kevin Samuels, he said only about um, less than 10% of people make over $100,000 a year. But all of these women are calling into him saying, oh, I want a husband that makes over 100000 It's because you're watching Instagram and um, videos on Instagram and you're looking at these celebrities and you're wanting um, to have those hashtag relationship goals when really you can't let that be your standard for how relationships look. And then number three, um, we feel as if we deserve more, like we've earned it or something. Like um, just because we're um, who we are, we just deserve the very best and we don't have to work with anyone. A man has to come along and he already has to have his stuff together. He can't be living at home with his mother and raising money or saving money to buy a house. He already has to be ready made when you meet him. Guess what? My husband, who I've been married to for it'll be 33 years in October, he lived at home with his mom when I came here um, because he graduated a year before I did. Then I moved here a year later. He was living with his mom and he lived with his mom for at least about two years um, before we um, bought a house together and got married. And so what if I had ruled him out with his beaten up Toyota Celica that needed, you know, hands raised to keep the upholstery from messing up my hair that probably didn't have decent or consistent heat. And, um, you know, I deserve the best, but he was the best, even though he wasn't making the kind of money he's making now. And even though he couldn't afford um, to live up to the ideals that back then, if Instagram existed, it didn't, fortunately. But if I had seen all of this stuff and I was saying, well, he can't buy me any Christian Louboutins, you know, he can't um, pay for a BMW or he can't, you know, get a Mercedes. He dri he's driving the beaten up college from college. But guess what? Um, he was smart. He told me not to buy a car because I wanted a BMW because I thought I deserved it, you know, after coming out of college, even though I had student loan debt um, that, you know, I couldn't afford to pay, I had to ask them to give me, um, <clears throat> I had to ask them to give me like a delay, you know, um, that I could like get my stuff together so I could afford to buy it. But my husband said, let's not buy a car. Let's um, just drive my car, even though I couldn't drive a stick. Um, so I was riding the bus. I was riding the train. He was picking me up from places. But he said, let's not buy a car. Um, you don't want that to show up on your credit because it'll reduce what we can qualify for for a house. And so I listened to him. And then we were able to buy in this beautiful townhouse condo um, that was a model home that, um, that I had never seen anything um, like. Like it because I grew up in the projects of Augusta, Georgia, and so I was very thankful. And then within three years, we had a beautiful um, three-level colonial in a beautiful neighborhood, like I had written about and asked God about. But it was because he was living at home with his mom. It was because he did drive a hoopty. <laughs> but I deserved the best. But he was the best and he was working to become the best version of himself. And I just think that we just think we deserve so much because we have our bachelors and whatever. We have our masters. We have our Ph.D. That doesn't speak less of a man just because he is living at home or he has roommates while he's saving his money. Look at the substance of a man, what he's doing, not at Oh, well, um, you know, does he have, you know, a 
$100,000 in the bank. Is he making $100,000? No, he might be making 50, but he might have $50,000 in the bank, you know, over time that can help you guys afford to buy the house that you guys want to buy. So I think that they're getting mad at us because we just think we deserve so much. Well, guess what? They deserve a lot too. They deserve a woman who will look at them based on their potential and is willing to work with them. That's how you get the husband of your dreams. And then number four, if I can find it on all these notes, um, because we make blanket character assassinations or we bash men, and we act like, I'm talking so much, I'm thirsty. Um, or we act like um, our accomplishments make us better than them and that um, it makes them less than. So when we're running around talking about, well, see, I don't need a man, you know, because I have my master's and I have my MBA and I have my PhD and I own my own house and I even have a rental property and I own two cars and I paid off this. Oh, and I just came back from a trip to Jamaica. And we're calling the roll on all of these accomplishments and we're making a man feel less than he doesn't have to have everything that you have. He doesn't have to have he doesn't have to match your degree for a degree. I knew a woman um, that um, was single with me back at Clemson. She wanted a guy that um, like she was in a sorority. She wanted somebody who was in a fraternity like she, you know, like on the same level. And I think she had a picture that, you know, that they would, you know, be doing all these wonderful things and that, you know, he would be at the same level you know, academically or professionally. And so I think she probably ruled out a lot of guys based on the fact that they didn't measure up in her opinion, based on him not being able to match. Maybe, maybe he didn't have a master's like she had. Maybe he wasn't a part of a fraternity like she was. Guess what? I'm not in any sorority and my husband is not in any fraternity. Those kind of things don't matter. Those things don't come in the bed with you at night. Those things don't pay nan bill. And those things don't mean that you're not compatible with somebody. And in the first week or two of meeting some guy, you don't need to be grilling him about how much money he has and how much money he makes. And, um, and also, you don't need to be asking him about his credit. It's funny, ladies will ask those questions, but ladies are scared to ask, are you dating anybody? You know, do you have any kids with anybody are you married you know do you want to get serious um after like three weeks of knowing um i like you you're a nice guy did you see this going anywhere um are we going to be monogamous those are the better questions to ask than how much money he's making because that makes it look like you're a gold digger like that's all you care about and so you kind of grow into that stuff i think you should focus on the relationship aspect and your compatibility first you you know, make sure he's not sneaking around, that he's not married. And a lot of times ladies are like, oh, I didn't know he was married. I didn't know that he had, you know, two children by someone. He might be living at home with his mom, but you can go over there and visit. You can go over and scope him out and see what's going on. That's the kind of stuff I mean to do your investigative homework. But all of this grilling about your degrees and why you don't have it and your fraternities, you look or we look a lot of times like we're very superficial and like we don't care about the most important thing and we don't want to give that impression but I think that that's one of the reasons they're mad with us too and then number five some of us are not the best versions of ourselves but we want to be hard on them and we want to diss them bash them and um, and say what they're not and why they're not the s word and just going out here on social media um, talking about black men like we're in the clan or something. Um, sometimes I think black women can talk about black men worse than a white supremacist would talk about them. And so I think that if we're going to be talking about them, we got to look at ourselves too. Um, and we need to be accountable. Like say if a, if a black guy says, um, you know, I don't want my wife or woman to go around with a, uh, um, a bonnet on in public. Then we're like, well, why we can't wear our bonnets? If we want to wear our bonnets, we can wear our bonnets. They're not going to force us to conform to, you know, some standard, you know, of, of 
European beauty or whatever, but yet we wear a blonde wig. Do you know how inconsistent that sounds to men? Um, we're talking about um, someone is trying to put us in a standard that white women, um, you know, based on white women, but yet we wear blonde wigs. What if um, what if a black guy doesn't want you wearing a blonde wig, um, you know, or at least a big fakey one, maybe a cute, believable one that you guys might agree on. It's cute, um, you know, but a lot of times we don't want to hear anything. I think that's embedded in this part five. They can't tell us nothing. If they try to tell us, um, well, see, I don't want you, you know, I'm out here in your slippers. You know, why are you wearing, um, you know, this little skirt where I can see your butt cheeks? You know, why are you twerking? And I don't know why I can't get this out of my mind. I was so disappointed with that whole Essence Festival thing. And they had the women on the stage with their butts up in the air. And it just seems like anytime you get any number of black women together now, um, they just think it's open season where we can just do twerking, um, you know, where we don't realize that to the world for us beautiful black queens that we are that makes us look like we're just um just sexual beings i mean and that's all it's not empowering it's actually degrading and it makes us not look like the best versions of ourselves but yet we're saying that black men aren't anything but yet we're putting ourselves out there in a negative light and we're out here you know yelling cursing acting a complete fool in a lot of cases and when a black guy says something about that for his woman, especially he can't say it for other women, but when he's saying it for his woman or someone he's dating, then you guys want to just drag him for Phil. Right now, they're looking at us thinking we're not accountable for anything. They can't tell us anything. And then when they go get Becky or Susie, we want to say, oh, well, see, they just, um, they just don't like um, black women and they just want white women. No. How do you know that they haven't tried with you first and they couldn't make it work with you and then they went oh and then like the other the excuse that we use is oh well see they just went with a white one because they can't handle um, me because I'm accomplished because I'm so strong and because you know they just can't handle a strong woman like myself what they could be saying is they don't want to put up with your foolishness they don't want to put put up with all that mouth and they want to be in a relationship with someone where they can give their opinion without someone trying to kill them, curse them out, um, yell, act a fool, and where they don't have peace in their surrounding. Because that's the one thing. Um, with the husband that I have, he wants peace. Let me start cursing at him, <laughs> calling him names, um, yelling, and just acting a fool in this house. Or if I change my hair too much, he really doesn't like that. Where it's blonde one day, you know, it's um, um, pink or red the next day is short one day you know huge wig like while we're on the beach bigs wigs on the beach a lot of men don't like that wigs at the gym a lot of men don't like that why don't you ask them if you're wondering i'm only saying what i've heard some of them saying um on the videos um in the comments like say on a kevin samuels ask the men in your circle if they think that black men are mad with black women and just take some time to reflect on the answers that you get and let me know. I'd love to hear if you hear any black women say, black men say, no, I can't think of any reasons why black men might be um, mad with black women or angry with us. And I'd love to hear that if you hear it, but I don't think you're going to hear that um, on a large scale. But anyway, I talked so doggone much. I really apologize. But I think that we need to talk more because um, because we are, um, you know, harboring resentment on both sides. And I can see their point. I can see our point. But I think we need to meet somewhere in the middle for the black men and the black women that want to marry within our culture. And I'm not saying that that's the only way because I would have married a white man very easily. With the Lord giving me this voice and um, the little bit of booty that I have, I just knew, I was like, you know, a white man, it probably is. But you know, my husband is black, but, um, but that's not necessarily the only way. But those of you who want to marry other black people, then I suggest you listen and find a way to have a meeting of the minds. But that's all I have to say. But would love to have a dialogue with you guys about it. But my husband is wanting to come on this level. <laughs> 
so I'd better um, let him have it and hopefully you guys have some comments so we can talk about it. Anyway, take care. Hope you guys have a good one. Bye.